Welcome to Real Physics. I've covered aspects of Einstein's work in another video, but this one is about his character, his method, and his general views of physics. So we are not talking about so much what he did, but how he did it, and I dare to say this is almost as important as the content of his theories. Einstein was a peculiar character, brilliant, creative, polite to others, but also stubborn in his convictions. God created the donkey and gave him a thick skin. That's what he said about himself. And I think what is characteristic for him is the total disregard of any kind of authority from early on. So while he was never a dutiful pupil, he had a good self-esteem. When a professor once tried to dissuade him, from studying physics because it might be a too difficult subject for him, he retorted bluntly, Professor, for the other disciplines I am even less gifted. So, as a student he was sometimes a nuisance to his professors, almost a rebel, and certainly what, not what you would call a good student. It's funny how he characterized this period. In order to be a good student, you need easy comprehension, willingness to focus all your attention to what is presented, orderliness for recording what is told in the lectures and elaborated it conscientiously. To my regret, I realized that all these characteristics were totally lacking in me. Little by little, I learned to live in peace with my somewhat guilty feelings and organize my studies in accordance with my intellectual stomach and my interests. There were a few lectures I followed with great interest, but I also skipped many. At home, however, I studied the masters of theoretical physics with zealous enthusiasm. This was good in itself and it served to mitigate the bad conscience so effectively that my psychological balance was not disturbed in any way. So he did respect what he regarded the masters of physics. And, but it's interesting, there is no one that you could reasonably call a teacher of Einstein. Einstein was no one's student and perhaps for that reason he was second to none as a physicist. He wasn't even a good collaborator. That's what he said about uh, others. I'm not suited for teamwork. Such isolation is bitter sometimes, but I feel compensated because being independent of the customs, opinions and prejudices of others I'm not tempted to let the peace of my mind rest on such unsteady foundations. This is very important because excessive groupthink has become one of the sicknesses of modern times. Einstein mocked those looking over their shoulders before forming an opinion. And he said, few are able to calmly express an opinion that differs from the prejudices of their peers. Most are even incapable of forming such an opinion at all. So, independent thinking was very important for him and look how difficult this has become in modern times. Einstein was an expert in thermodynamics, electrodynamics, relativity, he created it, gravitational physics, that means everywhere. But um, today if you're an expert in galaxy dynamics it's not easy to judge particle physics. You're supposed to trust the authorities, something that Einstein never did. So when people sometimes say modern physics needs a new Einstein, as if he was the godlike genius descending from heaven, I think maybe it's not that mankind is not talented enough, but because physics has become so fragmented that it is almost impossible to oversee fundamental research as it was possible in Einstein's time. Einstein, though evidently smart, for example, was no great mathematician. That became pretty clear when David Hilbert in 1915 was faster in deriving what is called today Einstein's equations. Also the correspondence with Elie Cartan in the late 1920s about a unified field theory showed that the French mathematician had superior skills. Einstein was very modest. He said that he had no special talents besides a passionate curiosity. However, Einstein had 
unsurpassed physical intuition and he knew that this strength led him to his revolutionary insights. If you allow me to contrast this with modern physics, today's orgies of mindless calculations are probably the root of the actual crisis of theoretical physics that deals with mathematical fantasies rather than reality. Today's theoreticians no longer refer to evidence. They don't even do thought experiments. An incredible tool, you might say Einstein invented, that led him to his greatest discoveries. As a 17-year-old, he wondered what would happen if he traveled alongside a light wave. And this strong ability of imagination eventually led him to special relativity. Another thought experiment, known as the equivalence principle, led him to general relativity. And also his profound critique of quantum mechanics, nowadays known as the EPR paradox, was a product of his unprecedented imagination and of his peculiar way of tackling the fundamental problems of physical reality. It's worth mentioning that Einstein's picture is a little bit distorted by his biographer Abraham Pais, who was a close friend of Einstein, but being a particle physicist, held diametrically opposed views. He just did not understand Einstein's deep convictions about nature. And I think we are well advised to consider those when thinking about physical reality. In this respect, there is a much better book by Ilse Rosenthal-Schneider. And it's interesting that Einstein thinks that there is a kind of meta law governing nature. I'd like to state a law of nature which is based upon nothing more than the belief in simplicity that means the comprehensibility of nature. There are no physical constants. That is to say, nature is so constructed that it is possible to lay down such strongly determined laws which only contain logically deduced constants. Even more explicitly, he said that he could not imagine a theory containing an arbitrary number which the whim of the creator could have chosen differently. If you try to learn something from Einstein's general approach to natural philosophy and from his deep convictions about physical reality, and then look at today's standard models of particle physics and cosmology, which contain dozens of arbitrary parameters, I think it's clear that Einstein would have considered these models just ridiculous. So when it comes to evaluating the current status of physics, I think we can learn even more from his general views than from his theories. I tried to learn something when writing my books, one of them about constants. And well, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.